What would you say is your favorite part of seminary? Mm, I would say that coming here every morning before the day begins just to be spiritually nourished and to put that armor on is really the best part because you really need a lot of protection in this world. It's hard to survive without spiritual nourishment every day and it's really important to me to come here every morning put that armor on so that I'm able to stand up for my, what I believe in. Being able to be with all the youth of our ward because we get to combine with Paradise First and Second Ward um, and it's just really nice to be with all those youth as we go to school every day and be able to support each other and learn about the gospel and strengthen our testimonies. I think graduating and getting free breakfast. <laughs> uh, I love the other students in my seminary class. Uh, I'm really good friends with a lot of them and I think it's great to have good friends with the same values as me. I really like that. Spirit that is present there because um, it's really nice to have this be placed in a spiritual environment before you go to school. So yeah. <laughs> Even though it's hard to get up really early in the morning, um, I absolutely love being able to start my day off with being able to just start off right to where I have the Spirit with me and when I go into the world of all these worldly things I'm able to know that I have the Spirit with me and I have the Lord on my side. It was when the teachers brought food and we had a nice big breakfast. The games probably when we do like little activities or games just kind of gets me like awake because I'm usually pretty tired in the morning. so. That's probably one of the bigger things I enjoy. Just the fact about how much I appreciate the teachers, because like I know we're high school students and we're like, oh, we have to be here, kind of feel like that. But like we actually have a choice. Our seminary teachers have to be here, and so I just feel really grateful to them. And it's it's, and and they're always happy about it. Being in a smaller class, I'm in the Durham Seminary, and there's only six of us in the class, so it gives us all a unique opportunity to be more interactive in the class because if we don't answer questions or volunteer to read, then there's r really no one else to read, and it kind of helps me um, become more engaged in what we're learning. Spiritual boost that it gives you just throughout your whole entire day. Sun rises, I see every morning on my way to the church mm -hmm. building. It just really gives me that um, like that source of beauty and that appreciation for like everything that God has created for us and it's just a perfect way to start my day. So, Just being able to experience the spirit every single morning before you go to school, you know, school can be such like a, a difficult place to feel the spirit and it just really helps you to um, have that light about you and to be an example of the believers. Um, I like um, probably seeing my friends um, before school and be able to talk to them um, and I feel a lot closer to them since I get to spend an hour before we even get to go to school um, with them and it's really cool it's cool too to be able to see them and have that relationship with them. Catching up with all of my friends going to Jekyll High I didn't necessarily see everybody because most of the other kids in my class went to PV so catching up with everybody and then also getting to know all of those friends kind of in a spiritual sense and hearing some of their more spiritual experiences and, and things that they have um, different insights was um, really neat over four years to grow with them so I think it was really fun um, and my favorite part was being with my friends and then sticking with them for, for four years of seminary and really getting to know them. It's coming in the morning and getting to start my day off right. It's my favorite part of the day. The comfort that I got from the gospel before I went to a crowded high school. Being able to to like learn all the stories of the scriptures but in the context of what they are in because often before I've learned about Nephi or I've learned about Paul but not really all of Paul or all of Nephi and so being able to learn everything about them has been my favorite thing. Yeah. How would you say seminary has strengthened your testimony of Jesus Christ? Getting me more into the scriptures because having an established plan on and a schedule for scripture reading has really helped me um, better my habit of scripture reading and reading every day and it has also increased my knowledge about different things and has helped me to be able to answer people's questions whenever they've asked me 
questions about our church, which that's been able to help grow my testimony because I've been more confident in what I know. Pushing me more to do daily scripture study, which I feel like that that's the most thing that I've gotten from seminary, is just the push to do daily scripture study. And daily scripture study just strengthens that testimony so much just by finding those little gold nuggets through every little page. Um, well, seminary has definitely, you know, just like given me inspiration when I feel like I didn't want it or didn't need it and um, has always been that really constant to, to push me to expand my testimony and to learn more about the gospel and this church that I'm a part of. So it's just been one of the um, positive pressures, I guess, bes behind um, my own conversion. Um, being able to dedicate and like an entire hour out of my day to study the scriptures and um, whatever we're doing that day um, has been something that I hadn't really done before seminary and it's really helped me to strengthen my testimony. Because you're just studying it all the time, you're completely immersed in the gospel and um, just that constant exposure and to have our entire gospel and scripture based around Christ, it's impossible to go to seminary and not feel that. More than anything, seminary gave me an opportunity to get to know Christ and not in an abstract way, but in a really personal way and his specific characters and attributes and specific ways that I can be more like Christ. And um, I learned a lot about charity in seminary and what it means both in, in physical acts and then also in acts of kindness and patience. And I think that charity was one thing um, that, that seminary really taught me about Jesus and it's one way that I've tried to be more like him in my everyday life. Well, I got to read all the scriptures and I got to form the testimony through the stories of the prophets of old. Seminary has strengthened my testimony by deepening my understanding of the gospel, which has led me to get answers that I was seeking. By answering my questions and by Having that daily reassurance and daily spiritual growth, which has strengthened my testimony in the Savior. When I first started seminary, I didn't feel like I had that strong of a testimony, and this has just strengthened it immensely. It has taught me just how important Christ is in my life. Um, it's given me a deeper appreciation for learning about his teachings and his ministry and it's really helped me just see how, how much of an impact he makes in my life and I'm so grateful for the sacrifice he made for us. Being able to wake up every day before school and go and learn about Jesus Christ and talk about trials that we might all be going through together as we are all in the same age has really helped me and yeah. <laughs> um, I think that for four years I've been studying him every day and it's really helped me develop my relationship with my Savior. I think that learning about the stories of Jesus Christ has made me more familiar with Him and I think that's just helped me develop a better bond between me and Him and um, that's definitely helped my testimony. It's really helpful to hear all the stories about Christ and especially this year since we've been um, we got to read the book of John, which is my favorite book. And, um, you know, John is, and all the other disciples are right alongside of Christ. And they're basically just documenting Christ's life and all the miracles that he performed. And I think that's really cool. Um, especially this last year, studying the New Testament, I have been able to learn so much about Christ's life and all the miracles that he performed. And also being able to just kind of see how the church was formed and how Christ and Heavenly Father um, completely put a plan together so that we wouldn't be left here all alone and um, isolated. And so it's amazing to know uh, all the different steps that He has put together so that we are able to return back to Him and have eternal life. Taught me to deal with trials that, you know, I have to get up at 6 in the morning and get to seminary before school and I actually have read the scriptures now. I hadn't read all the way through any of the books before seminary, so. Well, 
seminary gives me a lot of opportunities to learn more about the gospel and about the scriptures and obviously learning more about those would give you more of a testimony about Jesus Christ and all the experiences that he had and all the people who devoted their life to him had so I learned a lot from those thinking on it I I knew like <laughs> all the stories already well I should say most of the stories definitely when you read through it you're like oh, I don't remember this but when you read them and, and you like study them with your group you you have a bunch of input from the teacher and other students and you get more information and that information it, it I don't know a lot of times it just it just hits me right here and it it just it just expands the more you the more the more I know it just gets bigger and bigger <clears throat> so after four years of studying the scriptures do you have a favorite scripture person and who would it be and why well I was just kind of thinking of uh, a story that I absolutely love and it was from the New Testament uh, I never had heard this before I went to seminary and it was this miracle of Christ turning water to wine and it was at his siblings wedding and they ran out of wine for everybody and so Christ kind of went into a corner and said here here's the things that I need I need a, a pitcher of water and so a servant went and got a pitcher of water and he turned it to wine and uh, he didn't want anybody to know about it, so he was really humbled about it, and it was his first miracle. So that was really cool to see that he was so humbled and that he didn't want others to know about it. And then the people at the wedding were like, why did you save the... We've always been to all these weddings, but we've never had the best wine for last. So that was really cool to read about that. Ammon from the Book of Mormon. Um, I don't really have a reason. He's just always stuck out to me whenever I read it. I just like his courage and his strength when he cuts off everyone's arms and then somehow converts the king, so. Ammon, I like Ammon. And then certain stories about him that I like about him. Esther, and I will never not love her. But I think, I, I don't, I think it's really because she's just so brave and strong and I wanna be like her. I, I wanna, I wanna be, courageous and strong and I feel like oh my gosh I'm gonna cry <clears throat> sorry but she um, she's a wonderful role model the Apostle Paul and it's mainly because of all the um, trials and tribula tribulations that he had to overcome and the fact and his conversion story was really impressive to me and the fact that he was able to be so strong in his beliefs and trying to help other people to come closer to God um, that he was able to overcome his personal trials and help other people to do that. Job, because he endured so much, so much loss, so much, just everything he endured, but he still stayed faithful and dedicated to the Lord. When Christ raises um, a young girl's brother from the tomb and how um, it just showed his immense power, not in like, a creepy zombie-like way, but in, you know, pure um, bringing back to life of someone that was dead for, for joy and to show his immense power. Abraham, um, like the Abraham and Isaac story, um, just the fact that um, he was able, or he was willing to sacrifice so much um, was, I don't know, it's something that I look forward to and want for my testimony to grow to the point where I'm willing to sacrifice um, anything in order to complete what the Lord asks of me. Third Nephi. Um, I don't exactly remember how the story goes, but um, there's like a king, and um, I believe they like killed him, and without any previous knowledge of that, um, Nephi the prophet, I believe said that he was killed or something along the lines of that and so he just had like really great faith and um, understanding of revelation. 
Alma is my favorite person from the scriptures because he was so willing to change and I know that at this point in my life change is something that's kind of scary for me and getting ready to make a lot of changes is really overwhelming but knowing that he was brave enough to hear a message from Abinadi and then make the choice that he knew was right in his heart and, and really make that big lifestyle change um, has always been really inspiring to me and so I'd say that Alma is my favorite person because he was so brave and bold in changes. Nephi and that's because you start reading about him in the Book of Mormon and he just really has to go through a whole bunch of trials and overcome them, and he does that a very well job at that. Because I liked his um, personality and his education really shined through his words. Esther, and I love her because she is so strong and so amazing and so courageous and fearless. She was willing to part, put her own life on the line in order to stop the genocide of her people and the people she loved and I think that's an amazing thing. Um, I really enjoyed studying about Joseph Smith and all of this persecution he went through and yet he remained so faithful. In Doctrine and Covenants 121 and 122, those are some of my favorite sections because they um, go into deep detail about how much uh, trial, no matter how much trial that Joe Smith goes through, he will it'll be for his good. God is telling him, "This will be for your good. It'll be over soon. Just endure well, and you'll receive blessings." And I think that's a reminder we all need to take because. We all feel at times that trials are never going to end and they're horrible and they're really hard at times. We just want to curl up in a ball and cry. But if we just take that advice from God, that if we endure them well and patiently, we will, re we will be blessed in the end. Nephi and the uh, story of him just going into the wilderness with his family and having faith, that much faith, it takes so much to be able to do that and not know where you're going or why you're going. but. That's really strengthened me to have faith in maybe things that I might not know what we're, why I'm doing it, but I know in the end that it'll all work out. Nephi really stands out just because of his faith. He didn't always know why he was doing things, but he was obedient and had faith that everything would work out all the time. I love the story of Abinadi, and I love how he's just unwilling to um, <coughs> go against his testimony even if that meant uh, giving up his life. Nephi, because he, he had such incredible faith throughout the entire, well, throughout his entire life. And he had these, you know, his brothers who totally just would always be like, no, like, you're wrong. But he, he, even though his family would all turn against him, he still had such incredible faith and he did amazing things because of his faith. What advice would you have to upcoming seminary students? Wake up early and go to bed early. That'd be my advice. Don't stay up too late. It's not easy, um, but it's a lot of fun um, if you let it be. Um, and it's just a cool experience that you don't really get to experience anywhere else. Go. Uh, you can really like feel a difference between when you attend and when you don't. and. It's a really great blessing to have that spirit with you um, throughout the day. It is what you make it, and so if you show up late and kind of just um, sit there and take a nap or work on your homework, then you're going to get out what you put in. So try to show up even when you're tired and um, when it's you know not as fun, <laughs> um, and know that every single day there's something to learn, and it's all about your attitude. So my advice would be even when you don't want to go, go, um, and even when you don't want to listen, listen, and even when you don't want to participate, participate, and, and make it the best because you're there. Go to seminary with open ears and a positive attitude, willing to listen and hear what the teacher has to say. Go into seminary and actually pay attention and try to feel the spirit every morning. Say your morning prayers and go in wanting to learn because the, the lessons you'll learn there are magnificent and you want to learn them. Don't miss a day. Uh, if you miss a day, you feel, feel like you've missed out on a lot. Uh, just missing one day feels like there's a part of you missing when you're at school because you don't have that spiritual nourishment you normally get. 
if you do strive to admit, uh, go there every day and be participating in the lessons and do the scripture study, I can promise you it'll make high school 20 times easier. Just to listen. I mean, we all can sit there and be on our phones and do our homework, but to really listen and be involved in the lessons, you're going to learn so much, and it's prepared us all so much for our missions and our futures with our t and how to teach our future families. Be on time. The big part of seminary is the beginning with the song and prayer. That's really important to the, the whole lesson. Show up every day and to try to show up as on time as you can. I would definitely tell them to set an alarm that has a, t a certain kind of tone that would wake them up in the morning because, yeah, th being in s the 6 a.m. seminary this year, I have to really get a super loud and like obnoxious alarm to wake me up because it's so early. Yeah. Get up on time and go to the seminary because sometimes you might like wake up in the morning and you think, oh, I won't really need to go this morning, it's fine, I'll just, I'll make it up later. But in reality, when you get up in the morning, you're blessed and you have the Spirit with you. And also, if you have someone you're driving to seminary, it has that motivation too. So, that's very helpful. <laughs> Hang in there. It's not always going to be fun. Um, you're going to be tired, but go anyways, why not? You get a lot of sleep the night before seminary. <laughs> Come, <clears throat> mark your scriptures <laughs> and pay attention. <laughs> Especially if you're planning on going on a mission, because when you mark your scriptures, that's definitely gonna, like, it's definitely gonna help. Attend seminary regularly, because although at first it doesn't seem to have an effect on your life, it really will. Just being that consistently um, in the scriptures will help not only your knowledge about the church, but It'll help when you have, when other people have questions for you. And it just, for me, it just helps me throughout the day to have a more positive outlook. Don't sleep in, go to seminary. <laughs> Push through it. I know from experience how hard it can be to get up every morning and feel sometimes like you're too tired to get anything out of it and that um, your bad attitude can get in the way. But asking questions was a big thing for me. I felt like, um, the lesson was kind of mine to make if I really wanted to find out what I wanted to learn and asked about it and was curious, then that was a huge motivator in making that um, an important experience to me. Jesus wants me for a and be to die for him me today. In every way, I try to please him at home, at school, at play. A sunbeam, a sunbeam. Jesus wants me for a sunbeam, a sunbeam, a sunbeam. I'll be a sunbeam for him. I'm glad you someone can awesome. enjoy it. You are awesome yeah. because nobody else has had to sing in front of a, a, a peer. <laughs>